shut up and sit down. Welcome to the Health and Wealth Podcast with your hosts, Tim and Carter. What's trending in Richards? Carter Wilcoxon, founder of CSI Financial Group here with my co-host and former wealth advisor, Tim James, founder of chemicalfreebody.com and your new health advisor. This is the show where we reveal the connection between physical and financial abundance. Hey, welcome back in Richards. Thank you so much for joining us again for another episode of the Health and Wealth Podcast Show. I am joined here with my esteemed co-host, Mr. Tim James of Chemical Free Body. Tim James, how are you, my man? Hey, doing good. Doing good. Uh, you know, um, I just had something happen. Like uh, right now in our business, our merchant account is down. And I, I can't take credit cards right now. So we're literally at, well, we have PayPal up so people can go through there and they can still use their PayPal account, but um, through credit cards, even if they don't have a PayPal account. But, um, you know, um, I switched over and I did everything right. I, I went from this merchant account. I actually went over to Chase and it actually saves me about one, one, per, one point, one percent in fees, wow. which is quite a bit per month, uh, thousands of dollars a year. And so I was excited about it. And and I told the guy at the place, I said, hey, um, the old company's name is still up there on your deal, even though we're using this. Uh, how come it's he's like, oh, don't worry about it. He goes, you're with Chase. Everything's done. That's just going to remain that way just because of the way it was originally set up. But that's just where our software works. I'm like, OK, so I'm I'm with Chase. Everything's fine. I've been getting paid through Chase for quite a while. And then all of a sudden, Tuesday at four o'clock, I go down. We can't figure it out. We're like, what's going on? They never took the old company off as the reseller. So when they closed my account for being dormant, it shut my whole business down. And it's like, I was very clear with them. I'm like, everything's done right. I did all the paperwork. And they're like, nope. And now this company's like, I filled out all the paperwork, sent it in. He's like, well, you didn't send it out, right? It was a long story short. I got on again. I sent more paperwork in again. And it's going to be like three more days. It's just like the slow boat to China. But I, what I realized was, where's the benefit for me? Like we talk about this, I could get frustrated. Oh my God, I'm losing thousands of dollars. My customer service department's getting hammered right now. But the reality is, is I should be happy about this because because of this, I'm putting things in place. We're going to have a triple backup merchant account. So that if this ever happens again, I'll have two other ones approved, ready to go. I can just go click a button whoop, and we don't miss a beat. And I won't even know about it. Our customer service department will never know about it. And better now when we've got, you know, 20, 30 orders a day than when we have, you know, 1500 orders a day you know it could be like a train derailing if that happens so anyway remember yeah. life is meaningless it's only the meaning we give it right so right. i have i've had to take some breaths and realize why let it stress me out there's no so point just, I you just like about techniques this. that you teach right <laughs> yeah i get excited about it because i'm saving myself a huge problem down the road yeah, because something's going to happen and I'll have everything in place. I'll have all my backups in place and it'll be just smooth sailing. Yeah, well, I hope. I'm going to try, <laughs> try to make this a chase bashing session, so to speak. But um, was that with the merchant account or was no, it? No, it wasn't Chase's deal. It was actually a, a company called Heartland. And the Heartland has been good for me. There's nothing wrong with them, but uh, they just, um, uh, it, you know, Chase had a, a better deal and they actually approved me um, for to offer more things like the air purification systems, the saunas. Heartland, yeah. um, the current account that I had, I wasn't underwritten for that. So, hmm. yeah, well, I was only curious because when we went to an LLC to a C Corp not too long ago, you know, you go into the bank, you fill all, you know, you, all the paperwork and everything. And then um, I, I got a call just like some like random call. Oh, hey, you know, we got some stuff. We got we another thing we got to have you do or whatever. And then like one day, just all of a sudden my account's frozen. So I had to go in. For a document that they had to create, that wasn't even like, you know, me needing this. They had to make this document while I was in there. And it was like, how do you even do business? I mean, the banking industry is so, you know, fractured and, and so antiquated. It's not even funny. But yeah, anyway, I just ridiculous. wanted if it was Merchant Account or if it was Chase. No, it, was, it wasn't Chase. Oh, okay. All right. Well, hey, you know what, Enrichers? I am super stoked about our next guest that we have on our show today. Um, for a few reasons, and I'm sure we'll, uh, you know, talk about it along the way, but joining us from the Washington DC area, uh, Mr. Frank Biskov, which by the way, I've been saying that wrong for, for six months now. I thought it was a uh, Biskov, but anyway, he's going to pronounce it the way it was 
originally pronounced, then you really understand why it. He's probably not too upset about that. But Frank Biscoff uh, of uh, Forty Four Financial, um, yep, I guess dot com, right? Forty uh, Four Financial dot com is uh, is joining us today. So Frank, how are you doing? I am good. Thanks. Um, so excited to be here. Uh, obviously, Carter, we've had several in-depth discussions about a multitude of uh, topics uh, over the past several months and uh, uh, listen to the podcast and you bring up some good stuff. So excited to be here. Yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, well, we really do uh, thank you for, you know, for joining us and everything. And um, I, I appreciate the flexibility. It is our, um, I guess we're in the mid forties for podcast now, which is pretty exciting. Uh, you know, I can't even get over that. It's been, you know, that many, you know, so quickly, but the How this, fortuitous we're at 44 financial in our forties and podcasting. Oh my goodness. Oh my and goodness. Just so you guys, if you guys are typing up, looking up for Frank, just it's spelled 40 F O R T Y the number four financial.com. So it's 40 yes. spelled out the number four financial.com. I just want to get yes, that. Yes. In. So. yes. No. And, and thank you for that. So, uh, so in Richards, I, you know, I got a chance to, uh, to meet Frank as he alluded to, you know, uh, several months ago, and we talk about a myriad of different things or whatever. Uh, the original conversation started with the podcast, and it just sort of kind of, it just just goes to show you when you when you start a relationship relationship with somebody, you know, financial advisor or client or whatever, it can literally lead to anything, and it really has uh, between Frank and I, and uh, we formed a, a great relationship along the way. I'm very excited for him to share his journey into the financial services business. Uh, because I was kind of like, how does that even work? So anyway, in Richards, let's go ahead and jump into this and, uh, and and ask Frank what they really like to get to know is they want to get to know, you know, where you come from, what your journey was like and everything into the financial services business. So let's go back to, you know, the, the infancy of maybe you, you, your beginning of looking at getting into the, into the financial services business. Uh, was that a mentor or what was it that sort of led you, started leading you down this path? Well, uh, I think I was about 10 or 12. Um, I've always loved numbers. Um, I it, grew up in a household where money was not really a topic of discussion because there wasn't much to talk about. Uh, <laughs> in hindsight, uh, it, it might have been a little tight, but uh, us kids never felt it. Um, but... Uh, my mom is the kind of person where if she sees more than two numbers next to each other, her eyes glaze over. Mm -hmm. Not because she she's totally capable. She's just convinced herself she can't uh, do, deal with numbers. But my dad is the opposite. He was a... He was a um, Hold that thought. We, we had a... We had a caller trying to call in. Sorry, callers. We can't take any calls. Sorry, right we're now. not taking any calls right now. <laughs> Go on, Frank. You were saying yeah. that your dad. So, so, so yeah, my, my dad was uh, the complete opposite. He was a walking, talking CRM system. Uh, he, a uh, police officer for 42 years, ended up in kind of like the human resource uh, department where he did scheduling. He knew the social security numbers, birthdays, uh, like the 100 plus officers, their spouses, their kids, like, and the phone numbers, like he just knew everything off the top of his head. So um, he uh, ne never did much with numbers, but he he kind of got me intrigued uh, to it. And then here comes the market statement. And I am looking through it every month. And I see how like the principal versus interest component changes over time. And uh, that's fun for a 10 year old. Um, uh, so that kind of got me started and had a little bit of, um, money from a birthday gift invested in some uh, that was back when you could get 10% triple A rated bonds uh, don't see too many of those uh, these days but uh, so I got a couple hundred bucks worth of those and that got me, kind of got me started thinking about money in, in a different way um, but fast forward um, several years um, big into swimming uh, was in the national team back in Denmark um, and uh, after high school, took a couple of years to focus on that, got pretty close to um, making it to the, the big team. Um, like the Olympic team you're talking about in Denmark? Yeah. 
Yeah, so I, I was like, uh, kind of like next in line. Unfortunately, didn't get to go. The guys that went were better. Okay. But but I well, would have loved to be right? one of them. I, 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 was number, I was number five out of four. Uh, four got to go. Wow. Um, but uh, I learned so much about myself on, on that journey. But um, just had to try out the U.S., found a college that gave me a scholarship to try it out for a year. One became two, became four, met my met a girlfriend who was American, you know, like one thing takes the next. And, um, and a- after college, um, I kind of wanted to get into something to do with money. I wasn't quite sure what, um, but through the alumni uh, network, got a job in uh, commercial mortgage underwriting, meaning apartment buildings. And that was fun because it was storytelling. Single family mortgages, it's, it's a numbers game. You crunch a bunch of numbers and uh, kind of spit it out uh, according to the guidelines. But the multifamily housing was quite interesting. It was storytelling. It was like you looked at the competition, the demographics, who lives there, like who could move in, and what's going on. And that was, that was a lot of fun. Uh, so I was there for uh, a few years, but didn't see myself there long term. So wanted to move on, try something different. And we're kind of like, well, let's move to Denmark. So we sold the house and moved to Denmark. Now, uh, now, you're, now you're saying move back to Denmark, right? Because you're- Move back to Denmark. I, I'm from Denmark. So came for college, stuck around, and then uh, moved, moved to Denmark uh, just kind of for fun or try something different, be a little closer to... Uh, both my sisters live in Copenhagen at that moment. Um, got a job in another part of corporate uh, um, uh, or commercial real estate. Then the financial crisis had. It's amazing what that does to your job description. <laughs> For sure. Now, um, how old are you at this point? Uh, I was in my probably late 20s. Okay. When we moved back. Okay. So the um, Great Recession hits. Is that what you're? Is that where? No, we're that at? was two, 2008. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the uh, working in real estate when uh, everything cra- crashes. Uh, like the department I was in went from 21 to one. Uh, I was the last man standing. <laughs> Obviously, the job description was quite different. It was putting out fires instead of being proactive. Um, so. Started looking for something else, uh, was able to get a job with a little boutique wealth management firm that dealt with a lot of stuff that caused the financial crisis uh, as investors. The CDO, CLOs, like the structured products that should not have been out there, but they were amazing at finding the right investments where you could buy stuff at pennies on the dollar. And then within a year or two, you got paid back at, at, at par. So it was a, a tremendous learning experience. Um, but at that point, both my sisters had left town. I was kind of by myself in the family on the other side of the country, which in Denmark is four hours, mm-hmm. uh, small country compared to, uh, no, uh, to the U S. So we're like, Hey, let's move back to the U S. Uh, we're both like it here. Um, and, uh, didn't have a job, just moved. Took a little detour through Bali and Indonesia just to, because we had no no place we had to be. Why not? It's yeah, game. might as well. Yeah. Um, so came over here, got my CFP, um, and uh, was was coaching. Uh, I do triathlons and was co- I coached a um, fundraising team for uh, Crohn's and Colitis Foundation. Uh, and just asked, eh, I'm looking for a job, financial services, like financial planning. Do you know anyone? Someone said, you, you need to talk to my uh, my broker, my advisor. It's like, okay, yeah, I've set up a, a coffee. And he was like saying, yeah, this, this may not be for you. You shouldn't do it. But if you want to do it, th- this is what you, you, you need to do. Next day, he got a call from a headhunter. I was fresh in mind, connect me to the headhunter. I ended up getting, getting the job. So, no, it's... This networking thing is amazing. Like you never know who you know and who oh, they know. Yeah. Um, so I got to learn the ropes on um, how the uh, like financial 
um, advice um, industry works, um, but didn't uh, necessarily agree with the overall um, theme uh, of the company. Um, so I decided to branch out on my own almost uh, four years ago. Uh, one to focus on sustainable investing uh, and a high client touch. Uh, so that's what I'm trying to trying to build. Where um, I, I think money represents so much more than what you can buy with it. It's creating a um, an extension of yourself in what the money represents for you. Um, like being the the whole uh, sustainability means different things to different people. Uh, which makes for some interesting conversations and you really get to know people and what they stand for. Uh, obviously the money management is, has to be there and you have to do well, you have to make money. That's why, <laughs> why we are in this industry, help clients make money on their investments. Um, I really focus on the planning and get to know people and what they're trying to accomplish with their money and then align the investments with personal values and, uh, moving moving into the higher echelons of fulfillment and then the last step is kind of creating a legacy like what do they want to do with the money both while the, now later and, and, and after they uh, they pass eventually um, and that includes integrating the, with the next next generation um, and having a money talk that's more about what it represents than dollars and cents. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and so, well, well, Frank, well, let's get more into that probably in the second segment, but I want to, I want to go back a little bit. Right. I want to hear a little bit more about you were number five, number four, get you into the Denmark Olympic swim team. Okay. Yes. Well, I want to hear what races, you know, what was, what was your, you know, your breaststroke, you know, was it, uh, oh, absolutely not. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> a little bit more about your swimming, uh, right. You know, journey as uh, as well. And by the way, in Richards, here's another first. Just recently, we had the first giant giant slalom uh, advisor that went to college for that. Now is our very first Olympic, you know, Olympic hopeful. Let's call it Olympic uh, hopeful. Okay, uh, it swimmer. just goes to show that financial advisors are people too. <laughs> and believe it, believe it or not, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah so no, uh, I was. Um, uh, growing up, I was, uh, I, I didn't grow until like well into high school. Uh, I'm six, three, uh, but I was probably like, I don't know, five, six entering high school. So it's like this little bitty, uh, thing with like, uh, skin and bones. So I did the long stuff. Uh, the longer, the better you want, just wind me up, put me in the pool. I would go back and forth. You no, know, <laughs> no questions asked. Uh, then when I finally started growing into my, like building out, like getting the frame, uh, I could ex expand going down a little bit. Um, so I, it, where I was approaching uh, the big leagues was like in the four by 200 freestyle relay. Um, but did pretty much, pretty much every event. In college, I did every event except for the 200 breaststroke uh, at least once. Um, so always like been curious and like want to try different things. Uh, but yeah, like uh, freestyle was my, my go-to in college. It was 200, 500 in a mile um, every year. That's nothing better than swimming the mile, which takes, give or take 15 minutes on a good day. <laughs> on a bad day, you, you, you have uh, some questions as to why you're doing it. On a good day, you get, you find the zone you're right, right at your threshold for 15 minutes. It's amazing. If you like pain, it's amazing experience. Wow. I, I'm sitting there thinking a mile would take a day for me. <laughs> it, it takes a little more than 15 minutes now, oh, but yeah. Oh, um, my goodness. Oh, man. But, but yeah, no, it, it's... Um, I, I, I still swim and I never stop. Now I just do it once a week instead of nine. Um, but it's um, meditative. Uh, I don't see the black line at the bottom of the pool. Uh, I feel the water. I hear the water. I, I, I just love that experience. 
Um, like a religious experience for you almost is what you're saying. Pretty, pretty much. Uh, like, and it's amazing how, how you can clear your, your mind. Uh, like some people, uh, like people do it in different ways. Like it's amazing the ideas I come up with or like the solutions I find to an issue when I'm swimming. Cause you're just kind of letting the thoughts flow and just going with it. And I really appreciate that. And, and now like, uh, to make it, you know, since I, I didn't want to just keep swimming, so I started doing triathlons where it's like I picked up biking and running. And it's the same, like you, you're in your own little world and you just go for it. And uh, I, I really appreciate that. Have you ever? That's really cool stuff. You're like tapping into your higher consciousness, I think, when you're when you're doing that, right? Getting out of your right. mind, getting out of all the stuff at work and things with family. And you're just, there's like, it's, you some people say it's zoning out or whatever, but it's, um, I think it's tapping in and turning, turning things on, you know, tuning into yourself, which I think is really cool. So right. we're going to take a quick break When we get back. We're going to ask Frank some more questions and find out what he's doing. It's so special over there. And um, I'm really excited about this. I got a question for you when we get back about what he's doing to help people manage their wealth. We'll be right back. Estate planning. What does that even mean? When the inevitable happens for everyone on this planet, your estate plan kicks into action. But first, let's start with what an estate is. An estate is simply everything you own. Now, here's the issue and what needs to be understood when this event occurs. You only have two choices on this plan. Number one, either you plan how your estate gets handed out and distributed to those you leave behind. Or number two, your state decides who gets everything you own. For the first time ever, you can now take complete and total control of this plan that you've been deprived of for most of your life and generations before you. You can get personalized assistance along the way with a team of specialists whose job it is to make sure you have true peace of mind. It's important to understand that estate planning is a journey and rest assured that our team will be available to you all along the way and at every step. Welcome to eState Plan, home of the last estate plan you'll ever need. To learn more, make sure to reach out to your local advisor licensed with us or go to our website for more information. What's up, Enrichers? Tim James here. I'm back with my co-host, Carter Wilcoxon. Today in the house, we've got Frank Biskov. Did I say that right? Yeah. Yep. And now I can um, see Carter, right Carter, where do you get all these people with these these names? Like, James is easy, right? Or Smith. Like, can't you find anybody that doesn't have such cool names that, you know, I have to you raise know, my when, look, intelligence when to pronounce? Look, when, your, when your name is Carter Wilcoxon, you just sort of attract people with unique names, I guess. I don't know. I guess. I guess. <laughs> well, Frank, we're really happy that you came here today. You've got a really good presence, some good energy. I like that you're an athlete. And, um, I just, I feel like you're a darn good human being. So, you know, one thing that was um, really cool when I was looking at your website, you don't see this very much, but it says, um, helping you reach your goals through sustainable investing. So can you tell us a little bit about that and what you got going on there? Yeah, well, it, it is kind of like, uh, I think at the essence, like sustainable investing, if you purely look at it from the investing point of view, it's investing in stuff that makes sense and is going to stick around. Because if you avoid the big loss, you don't need as much gain to make up for it. Um, the primary reason is I believe in leaving the world better than we we found it. And we're way behind right now. Like in the past several decades, the world is worse. Um, Tim, I know you mentioned on the um, episode with uh, Gary Loftsgaard, like uh, that you think we have a pollution problem uh, more than an environmental problem? We have both. Um, I think it's a resource problem, uh, which goes uh, both with natural resources, um, human resources. Uh, it goes in a lot of different ways. And clearly, pollution is a huge part of that. Um, I'm not a big fan of plastic. Um, but it is almost impossible to avoid it. Um, 
but hopefully we can make steps in the right direction. And I would like to use investing as part of that solution by uh, investing in companies that are, first off, not trying to do more harm, but secondly, hopefully trying to come up with solutions uh, to some of these issues. Um, and that, that is kind of the sustainability to me. Um, ESG investing has become a hot theme on, on Wall Street. Um, the way they choose to in, interpret uh, ESG investing is investing, uh, ESG stands for environmental, social, and governance. So how they have approached it is to look at the companies that will profit from changes or these parameters. So, okay, climate change brings with it certain um, changes, demographic changes, uh, regulatory and so forth. So they look for companies that profit from it, not necessarily fix the issue, but profit from it. I like to look at it from the other side and look at what companies are actually looking to fix this issue. Um, there are some great data providers out there. Uh, if you look at a pretty generic portfolio, uh, COP26 was not too long ago. We're talking about like the one and a half to two uh, degrees Celsius, um, trying to keep it below that. Uh, a pretty generic diversified portfolio has a three Celsius grade um, impact. I have built a portfolio that is creeping below two um, and hopefully we can improve on that. Uh, same with um, the, so, uh, the social justice is a pretty hot theme these days uh, over the past couple of years. And you can invest in ways where you, uh, companies that are acting in a positive, like have a positive impact in, uh, on say gender equality. Um, they get better, better access to money Hence, they become more profitable. Uh, that is kind of like the essence of it. At the because if you look at long term, if you are open to all of the talents at for a, an open position, be it whatever it could be, male, female, different ethnicities, different uh, nationalities, you have more talents to choose from. Hence, you get the better fit uh, instead of looking purely for someone who who's like you. Uh, which that's a, a bias that, that's a um, I, I, a lot, lot of different things that work but uh, if you're comfortable with someone who's like you because you know you so if, but if you can go outside of that box and hire someone who is unlike you they bring different opinion, different ideas different um, um perspectives and you end up making better decisions that you may still on take on risk not everything works out but you you tend to be more you tend to mitigate the risk at a higher level uh, so that's sustainable like trying to accomplish move the needle even just a little bit in the right direction is key and a big part of it is engaging with clients and uh, make them think about like what, what what's important to them and uh, and maybe they help them like feel empowered and want to do do a little bit more uh, as well, because any one solution will not solve the issues. It has to be a multitude of approaches, and I think sustainable investing is one part, uh, one important, but not the standalone portion of it. Yeah, and Frank, will you do a do me a favor a little bit because I, I get the the you know you talk about the E and you talk about the S so far. Talk to me a little bit more about the governance side of that ESG, the way you sort of perceive it and the way um, maybe Wall Street perceives it. Because it sounds like you guys are sort of in two different camps there. Well, it's uh, uh, you, you can you can find a company that does well in both aspects. And that's kind of the intersection I'm looking at. Uh, but, but the G uh, governance is having the structures in place, uh, having an independent board of advisors, Having, um, like, if you looked at the, the scores before the Equifax breach, they failed on data security, which is pretty bad when you're a data provider. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, so, when, so, when your credit depends on a company like that, right? Right. So, so like, uh, if you follow that, like, obviously, if you fail in that area, it doesn't mean you're going to have a big issue. But there was kind of like a little orange flag uh, going behind this uh, uh, on that one. Uh, so governance is having a board that does not just rubber stamp the CEO's decisions, uh, but actually uh, works with and questions the uh, the executive decisions. Uh, that's a big part of it. Um, as a lot of a lot of the themes go cross multiple like both E S and G. Um, but having like the right, um, also hiring practices, um, it's both the S and the G. Um, and I, I think that's where there's a pretty direct link to the bottom line by having better, pre better boards, um, keep executive pay in check, uh, -huh. uh as well, um, can have a pretty solid impact on the bottom line while ho hopefully having a positive impact. Like, um, I, I have a three-year-old daughter and I want her to have all the opportunities I did as a male, um, if she wants. Well, I, you know, um, so, so he, I, here's what I'm interested in. What I'm interested in is your clientele Obviously, I, I can see who a good fit for you is, someone who can appreciate that. But from the time whenever you start talking with, you know, prospective clients, right? They're not your client yet, right? right. Are they attracted to you because of they know where you sort of land? Or, or is there a bit of education on their part that you have to almost bring them along the journey of what you feel is more of the reason why you, you know, focus on the whole ES and G, you know, uh, uh, investing and in, in creating portfolios built around that. Which one of those come first? And, and is, there a, is there a mix of people who are like, yeah, you know, I can see where that can help out, but really, I'm really more worried about the, you know, the, the overall number and I really don't care. About, I mean, how does that blend? I, I have clients in both camps. Yeah, um, yeah. But I'll say the, the prospective clients and the ones that I'm uh, kind of targeting are the ones that are aware. Uh, but they may not know it's possible for them to do because uh, uh, ESG impact sustainable, whatever you call it, it has a lot of different names to uh, different people used to be for institutional investors only. I on a big push to make the retail investor know they can do it as well. And they may say, well, what I do does not, matter because I'm this little, you know, I'm just little itty bitty me, but you and your thousand closest friends, you know, like all of a sudden you, you start making a big difference. Um, I, uh, connecting with advisors across the country that are like-minded and hoping to, to raise awareness, uh, and making this, um, people know that you can make a little bit of a, uh, a difference, um, by investing according to, to your own values. And if nothing else, you can feel good about how your money is invested. Um, but no, mo most people don't know uh, the extent of what it is when we start talking. It's more they usually have values that are aligned with what I do and they don't feel heard. Uh, and when they hear about sustainable investing that, wow, can you do that? And I can make money at the same time. Um, from there on, it's usually a pretty easy conversation. Gotcha. So, you, so, I, so I would imagine then you have a very diverse uh, clientele then, is that fair? Yeah, yeah uh, a lot of different, um, I, I have a good breadth in my clientele. Uh, say but both, both geographically, but uh, also from um, a uh, like where, where they are in their lives. Um, and, and I have some clients that don't necessarily believe in sustainable investing, except that it can help them make more money. <laughs> uh, and that, that's perfectly legit. Like it, it, it raises all boats. Yeah. Um, 
but uh, no, it's, um, it, it's it's a fun conversation to have. Yeah. What's the what's the age breakdown? What's what's your youngest client? How old your youngest client? How old your oldest client? I'm from I think thirty to seventy two. Thirty to seventy two. Okay. Seventy three. She just had a birthday. Yeah, seventy three. <laughs> so so you are in the uh, Washington D.C. area. We're exactly in. Uh, is, it, is it Maryland? Is it D.C.? It Where? is uh, uh, Bethesda, Maryland suburb. Uh, okay. So. Um, I think if you, um, the, the main road uh, by you go straight for quite a while, you get right down to the monuments. Mm. DC is one of those like structured cities uh, where downtown is a grid and then you have these kind of uh, diagonal uh, major roads like Pennsylvania, Ave, Wisconsin, Ave, uh, Massachusetts, uh, the ones I've s spent most of the time on. Um, so it, it's it's close, but it's not too far. Not like a 10 minute walk to the metro goes right down to the zoo. So that's the pandas on a regular basis. Okay. Uh, I, it's, it's pretty cool to be close, but I'm also far enough yeah. where like I don't have to go down there very often if I don't want hey, to. Frank, what's the infrastructure down there like? How, what are the tunnels and the roads, the bridges, and and is there people in tents in the city? What's going on over there? Well, it, it's uh, traffic is a mess, even with the uh, people working more from home. Um, they they keep talking about like uh, I think I saw a few years ago uh, out of the top ten worst uh, traffic spots we had two or three, hmm. uh, and I actually crossed two of them to go to work back then. Um, but uh, no, it's it, it's somewhat like a downtown DC is a business district more than residential, and then you move outside like outer DC, you start with the residential. And then the suburbs go like uh, across uh, three states, uh, so so it's a very very spread out, uh, not not very tall. Uh, meaning you have to travel a fair a fair distance to uh, to go. What's anywhere. the quality of the roads and stuff like that? I was just curious since you live there, the bridges. Do you see things falling apart, or are they just looking pristine and awesome? Uh, I think more falling apart than looking pristine. Uh, yeah. But sometimes you can tell when you cross the a jurisdiction, jurisdictional line. Uh, that, that's one place I go biking. The, the Maryland side, you have potholes, but DC just redid the road. It was like a three-year project. You go through Rock Creek Park, down by, like, there's this amazing, It's a, I think it's a 20-mile uh, national, like it's a forest and there's a road in the middle of it. Some, like you, you can almost touch both sides of the forest in some spots and other spots, it's a couple of miles. Uh, but it travels all the way down to, um, for those of you that have been to DC, like Kennedy Center, um, Georgetown, it, like you, it, it goes right down to pretty much University of Georgetown from, um, from up in Maryland. And where you have nature in the middle of the city, uh, which is quite nice. So it, it's a it's a good mix, um, but uh, I'm glad I don't have to go downtown on a regular basis. <laughs> yeah, traffic sounds like it's crazy. Um, so so just out of curiosity, obviously you are you're based in the D.C. area in Bethesda, Maryland, and everything. Um, but with what's you know happened uh, with respect to virtual meeting accessibility and comfortableness, if you will, for prospective clients. Are you branching out and trying to work with other clients in other parts of the country? Or is everybody centrally located in that Bethesda, Washington, D.C. area for you? Uh, I have clients um, in, I would say, three out of the four continental time zones. So I, I, I go to... Um, uh, I'm, I'm nationwide, uh, which is nice. Obviously, I have a stronger presence locally because uh, that's the whole networking effect. Uh, but but I do have clients up the uh, up to New England and, and across uh, to California. So, uh, and, and that's the beauty of 
that's one of the positive things that came out of the uh, the pandemic is mm -hmm. people are more in tune with are willing to take uh, online meetings so you can you can reach people in different ways and to make my family life work with a three-year-old like i work at, in the evening which is great for the west coast, cl coast clients um so like if they're done work i'm done with the dinner season in bed and i'm available again so uh so that actually works pretty well awesome awesome well, uh, my guess is I can almost see it in my co-host eyes that we're coming up on a on a break here and everything. Um, but is it is it fair to say that uh, you know you you sort of lean towards the the ESG, but you really want to help a diverse area, a number of different clients, no matter where they live, and the reach that you have now is actually a lot easier to be able to do that now that people are more comfortable uh, being online. Right. I, I, I believe firmly that sustainable investing is a better way to invest, both from a return and values perspective. Um, oh. And uh, working with clients across the, the country, um, like how you invest, if you don't know what you're investing for, um, does not necessarily yield the results. So having that firm, like, the client conversation as to what they're trying to accomplish and having the planning in place that that comes first, then the investments is a, a layer on top of that. Um, so yeah, well, it, the client conversation is what drives me and making people see sort of see the light and that they can do better while still making money uh, is um, that, that that's what I love about what I do. Awesome. Awesome guys. Well, that's a, I think it's a good approach. Um, I like it and, um, let's do this. We're going to take a quick break and when we get back. We'll flip the script and we'll be talking everything about health. We'll be right back. You want the absolute best for yourself and you want it to be easy. That's why we created green 85. It helps with detoxifying the body gently we're proud it's chemical free unlike almost all other supplements you'll find bottom line green 85 will get you healthier we look forward to hearing what green 85 did for you to get this product and our other amazing products go to chemicalfreebody.com that's chemicalfreebody.com What's up, Enrichers? Tim James here. I'm back with my co-host, Carter Wilcox. And today in the house, we've got Frank Beiskoff from 44, 44 Financial. And that's spelled F-O-U-R-T-Y, the number 4 financial.com. Just so you don't get confused if you typed in. It, there, it can be typed in many ways, right? Well, yeah, yeah. No, that was one of those. It made sense when I, I did it. But uh, maybe I would have chosen a, a, a different spelling these days. But uh... <laughs> Yeah, well, that's no, okay. It, we'll we'll figure it. We'll put it. We'll Carter. We'll drop it down in the description in the show notes for you guys can find if you want to check out. Just click Frank, on. Frank, want to do a little oh, sustainable yeah. investing? Yes. Yep. So anyway, Frank, let's. Uh, any questions you got uh, for health for yourself about public health, whatever? Well, I, I have uh, like I know you uh, grew up on a farm, and uh, even though I am in the city, I do love my vegetable garden. Uh, so. Any, if someone wants to go there, do you have any, uh, like, how do you get the biggest bang for the buck with the vegetable garden? A good place to start, like both uh, um, the, the avoid, hopefully growing the dirty dozen yourself or um, to avoid the pesticides, but something that's easy and successful makes you feel good and yield a decent result. Yeah. Well, the first thing that's the easiest you might want to write this down as you can actually contact this company, OceanSolutions.com, Ocean Solutions. So again, if you want to have like a bumper crop in your, in your garden, you want to have strong, healthy plants, then you need strong, healthy soil. And that soil um, needs to have, you know, nutrients in it, right? So a lot of the soils out there are, you know, they're just not that great, right? So um, 
what ocean solutions does is they go out into the Atlantic ocean. They send a pipe way down on this big ship and they suck up some, some ocean water and then they concentrate it, clean it and they'll send it to you. It's concentration ocean minerals. So um, there's various ways that farmers are trying to, you know, remineralize their soil today. Um, one thing that you'll see is the, the farm outside of here every year, they dump a bunch of cow crap on the, on the field and it stinks, right? But they're bringing, you know, they're trying to reintroduce fertilizer, basically a natural fertilizer. Um, my problem with that is what are they feeding the cows? Are they feeding it genetically modified corn, soy? But I could digress on that. Another way they do it is they'll take rock dust where they'll, you know, where basically you mine the earth and they crush the rocks into fine powder and they put that out there. That's pretty rough on the earth because we're tearing it apart. Another way is ocean solutions. What they do is they just take the water and then, you know, concentrate it and then you spread it out. So my brother's garden down in Woodburn, Oregon, before he passed away, I said, dude, let's try this ocean solutions on your garden. He was like, all for it. We sprayed it on the plants a couple times. And guess what? He was like, dude, like phew. it was like double the size garden in the same area. I mean, just like bursting. Right. So it's so important to get your nutrients. So a couple things you can do to have like a really cool sustainable garden is um, uh, number one. There's something called permaculture. Are you familiar with that, Frank? Uh, not, uh, not. Right yeah. So check this now. out. Check into permaculture because it's kind of, it's the way nature works, right? Which means you don't till the soil. You're just leaving the soil alone because what people don't realize is that in the soil, not only are there all the micronutrients, the elements in the elemental chart, you know, and stuff like that, minerals, but there's also bacteria. They're called soil microbiome. And these soil microbiome import are very important. They're the little laborers that actually transport the nutrients from the dirt into the root system of a plant. They do this a very good job. So when you till the sto soil, you're killing them. You're literally knocking them back and w wiping them out. So um, unfortunately, that's the way we've been taught as a society for years is to till the soil. And I, you know, I grew up long history of farmers um, in our family and, and where I come from and almost everybody's telling they're all telling they were maybe they just never taught this and they're, they're they've been taught by the chemical companies you till it use the synthetic fertilizers and use the pesticides the fungicides the herbicides that's how you do it to get the maximum yield so you can make your money and a lot of the farmers have got locked into this unfortunately a lot of the farmers are sick and are dying from spraying those toxic chemicals on the plants growing food for us think about how weird that thought process is to put toxic chemicals on the soil and on, on the plants like herbicides is an example. Most people are familiar with Roundup. The main ingredient in Roundup is glyphosate and you'll see, uh, you know, I go back home to Eastern Oregon. My mom and dad got the TV going 24 seven and there's always a commercial every single time I go back there. There's a bunch of them, but one of them is like, if you've been exposed to glyph or Roundup or glyphosate, the main ingredient in Roundup, you and have lymphoma cancer, you may be entitled to compensation. You know, Joe Blow down here has just got uh, 77 million awarded because his cancer was directly linked to this herbicide, this plant killer, which is also killing people. And um, so they're, those attorneys are running those ads not because they're nice people. Uh, maybe they are. Um, they wouldn't be spending that money unless it was profitable because they want to find these people because it's a slam dunk deal. If the case works, then, the, you know, the lawyers are getting their whatever 30, 40 percent of that of the take. So it's lawyers wouldn't be spending money on ads if they're if they weren't making money. So obviously there's a, a big problem out there. Um, over 74% of our rainwater has glyphosate in it. And um, what's unfortunate is it blows my mind. You can have an ad literally on TV saying, you know, call us. We'll, we'll, when the, we'll, we'll represent you. If you've been exposed to it, you've got cancer from this. And then the next ad could be, you know, over at a hardware store or a home and garden center. And guess what? You can still go buy Roundup at the home and garden center and spray it on your plants and your garden and in your lawn and stuff like that and track it in and, you know, and slowly um, lower your immune system and kill yourself and your kids. I mean, that's just where we're at today. So it kind of blows my mind. But I just want to make a big deal about the permaculture thing because look into permaculture, Frank. Ionic ocean minerals or uh, ocean minerals from oceansolutions.com is an example. You can also plant different varieties of plants and herbs. There's certain herbs and plants that you can pl plant that give off certain um, 
uh, chemicals, phytochemicals that will are they're pest deterrents, right? So if you're strategic about this, in fact, I had a guy on my podcast not too long ago. That's what he's doing for a living. You can he'll actually um, you just say, here's my square footage, here's my lawn. They hook you up with an engineer and they help you map out your entire garden and they show you which plants to put and where to create it so it's all sustainable. They'll actually engineer the whole thing for you for like $795. Then if you want them to build the whole thing and set it up, it's a lot more than that. They'll come in and do it or they'll hire a contractor to do it or you just do it yourself with the plans. But that might be something if you're really looking at you know, boosting it, raised beds. A lot of times you can do lattice work and you can start growing things up. Growing up is another way to increase it. All these things are things you can do, but look into permaculture, look into ocean solutions, look into growing uh, vertically. Um, and um, I think those things would help you get some bumper crops over there. I'm curious, how do you add uh, compost or uh, to, to the soil? Um, if, if well, you um, think about it. How does nature do it? They lay it on top. Let the worms lay it on out. top, right? Yep. So that's the way it is. So if you're, it's because a lot of people are like, yeah, if I've got a compost pile, normally I would take that and I would mix it into my soil, right? Well, you can just spread it right on top if you have a compost pile going on, right? Because it'll uh, just that's easier. Seep. It'll just seep. <laughs> yeah, it'll just seep down. It's less work. That's a win-win. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So another thing is like when you're using permaculture, you're really keeping those bacteria. That's the reason why so many humans are getting sick today because the gut bacteria is jacked. I mean, it's just they're wiped out. You take, you know, they've been popping, um, you know, uh, certain types of medications and stuff, especially um, antibiotics. Let's just wipe out your immune system. They wipe out your gut bacteria. Stress does it. We got a lot of stress nowadays. That'll wipe out your gut bacteria. Alcohol does it. Dr other drugs, recreational drugs, kill them, you know, so um, pesticides, fungicides, herbicides, larvicides, all the things they're spraying on our crops. A lot of stuff we're eating today is wiping out our gut bacteria. So it's really important that if we don't have good bacteria, we're going to have a lowered immune system. We're not going to be as healthy. And it's the same thing with the soil. If the soil doesn't have its bacteria in there, it's not going to be as healthy. It's not going to grow as healthy of a plant. And then the animal or you that eats that plant is not going to be as healthy because the root there's a root problem there, right? So right. being really mindful with the bacteria in the soil is a really, um, really good awareness to have. And you're, you start doing this stuff right. You can grow awesome crops. You're going to have less pestilence because the, the plants are actually going to be stronger. Their natural defenses will be up and they won't be eaten as much um, by the bugs. Well, uh, my, my bugs have a fluffy red tail. The squirrels eat like most of my tomatoes. But, uh... <laughs> yeah. Those are pretty um, big bugs. Big, big bugs. Uh, um, now, what, what's a good starter, like, uh, plant? A if, starter if, plant? If you, if you don't have, if you have purple thumbs and you want to get started, something that low maintenance, relative uh, chance of success. Are you talking about out in the garden or in the house? Uh, in the garden. In the garden. Well, I'm trying to think of something that you could plant once and it would just keep coming up. Um, well, know. even if it's uh, like uh, once per year, uh, like Oregon is not too far from like the middle. Well, of the state, so. you know, something that a lot of people think is a weed. I think it's a really awesome plant. It's called purslane. Have you heard of that? Nope. Yeah. Look up purslane, P-U-R-S-L-A-N-E, purslane. It's on, it has really good omega fatty acids. It's growing on most of the sidewalks across America. It's all over the place. People it, people look at it as a weed. In fact, I remember when I went to um, the first time I heard about it, I was at a farmer's market and I looked at it and I was like, that's a weed. And I, you know, and I looked at it and I'm like, oh, and then I looked it up and I'm like, whoa, it's like tremendous health benefits and stuff. I was like, wow, I've been stepping over this stuff. Now, of course, I'm probably not going to eat it off the sidewalk because Billy Bob probably sprayed it with Roundup because he was trying to kill the weeds, you know. And I, and I get it. I understand people are busy and actually going out and pulling weeds is a lot of work and all that stuff. But the reality is, is that when you spray Roundup and stuff like that, you're killing yourself and 98% of that stuff runs into the drinking water and it's coming back into you and the rest of humanity and all the animals. It's just not a fair thing. It's not, it's not, it's not cool. All right. So if you're spraying Roundup, that ain't cool. Stop doing that. Like there's other ways of doing it. Strengthen the soil, um, get a, get a hoe and pull the wheat, pull the damn weeds up by the root. 
Uh, it's right. a good exercise. You don't have to go to the gym if you're in the garden pulling weeds one day. Um, yeah. Uh, no, there's a local group here in Bethesda uh, called Bethesda Green that uh, every few months they have a volunteer event to go around and pull weeds from the sidewalks. Oh, nice. Uh, so it's, uh, I, I think it's, it's a great idea um, and something you can get, get involved in. You know, you spend like, an hour and a half, two hours on Saturday. Oh, yeah. uh, I think that's a great idea. Like local, local impact and uh, something you can feel good about. And yeah. get outside and get outside, right? Right. Boost your immune system. Yeah. And you're building community too when you go out and do that. And I can tell you when I was like 10 years old, I'm like, hey, I'm out of here. We're going motorcycle riding or me and Mike are going fishing or we're going to do this. And like, no, you're going to. You got to weed the strawberries in the garden first. And I look at it and there's row after row. And I'm like, what? You know, and I hated it when I had to do it. I was like, oh my God. But I guarantee, no matter what, even no matter how much I hated it and whatever, when I got done and I look back at those strawberry rows and they were all beautiful and pristine and weed free, there was a deep sense of satisfaction and accomplishment there, even when I was 10 years old. Well, especially like nowadays, like when you're working like a service job, you're sitting at your computer, there's something so satisfying about the manual uh, manual labor and like getting stuff done like I, i've been working in the past i don't know 10 months at refinishing a table i still need to finish it but but like when you see each stage like mm -hmm. that that accomplishment you don't don't get from an excel spreadsheet no, uh, no. um it, it's you're not going to uh, get it like satisfying. on social media you can't you, you can't human beings are you know we're supposed to be out being where we come from nature. You know, I've, I've been hammering on this lately. It's like, we are not living in nature. We don't live with nature. We are an expression of nature. We are nature. You're mostly made of water. You find that in nature. Those gut bacteria are also found in the soil. The soil bacteria were made of minerals. We're nature. And we just got, you know, when you go outside and take your shoes off and get your feet dirty and start sniffing some dirt and stuff like that, you're going to boost your immune system. You're going to get your vitamin D, that's going to boost your immune system, fresh air, boost your immune system. And you're reconnecting where, from where you come from and where you're going to eventually go back to one day, you know? So yeah. there's just, there's some power there. And there literally is, and we talk about it a lot as grounding and earthing is like literally when, you know, we are one of the few, actually the only species that I know of that is not connected with the earth. Like we wear rubber shoes. We live on, you know, concrete foundation, second floor, we lie on a bed, our cars have rubber tires. We're disconnected from Earth, and literally, the Earth puts off a frequency, right? When I was talking about it, like when you hold up a compass, what moves the needle? Something going on there. There's a, there's a magnetic field. The electromagnetic field um, is there, and that field in the Earth, when you're in contact with it, just like every other creature, you're literally charging your cells. So the Earth is like a battery pack, and as soon as you disconnect from Earth, you start, you get inflammation. You don't have as much energy vibrating into you. So that's why it's so important to get outside and get, and what, you know, people like taking their feet off or shoes off and going to the beach. And it's not only does it feel good to be in contact with it, but there's actually a charge that you get. And people that started grounding, and that's what we teach is one hack that we've been teaching for years is that you should sleep on a grounding sheet or a grounding pad. Right now, I'm touching a pad right here. This is plugged into the wall. And it's the third prong bringing every commercial residential industrial building has a, a iron rod driven into it with a link or a wire going into it. It's the foundation of the electrical grid, the ground. That's that same frequency. So you can pump it into the house and ground yourself. So right now I'm, I'm charging my cells while we're talking, getting all jacked uh, up. That's, over a, that's here. a pretty cool hack, but uh, <laughs> no, like I, I love it. And, uh, like I, um, well, one of my favorite, uh, times of the week is mowing the grass. It, it takes about like a uh, health and wealth podcast with Tim and Carter uh, to, to do it. Uh, <laughs> but but I have a wind powered lawnmower, uh, which is pretty cool. You know, like uh, certain parts of the country, you have a free choice of electricity provider, and I chose one that uses renewable energy uh, and then a battery powered like lawnmower, and it makes less noise. Uh, I can actually talk to people while it's running, no, no, uh, no pollution. And 
uh, and then getting out there and doing it yourself. I think uh, it, I, I love that. It's one of those meditative where you, uh, as we talked about earlier, where you connect to yourself in a different way, like uh, like a, a different different version of yourself. Now, Frank, I got a lawnmower for you. That's the most sustainable lawnmower ever invented. You're, I know you're going to want one of these. It makes well. It does make a sound, but it, it, you can talk around it. It doesn't matter. It's called a goat. You ever heard of one of those? I, I've heard of them. Yeah. Yeah. They, they'll eat everything. You got blackberry bushes. They'll mow them down. They'll get them out of there for you. Nope. Yeah. Well, I, I, I have a hatch. I do like uh, to, to keep the cars a little bit further from, you know, like create a little bit of a green space. And, uh, and that's one of the things like um, a lot of people comment on. Like it, we have, um lower bushes so they're green all year round because there's a huge mental aspect like seeing green in the middle of winter uh, seeing the sun and seeing green uh, i think has tremendous uh, impact on your well-being uh so the goats may not fit fit the bill on this one <laughs> well, you can get them a little hut <laughs> we'll have a sustainable sustainable light in there we'll get a free energy machine going keep them warm Hey Frank, I'm I'm curious when you when you mow the lawn, listening to the Health and Wealth podcast show with Carter and Jim. Thank you for that shameless plug. Um, do you do it barefoot? I, I have, I have. Uh, I, I don't do it all the time, but I, he's I, only I got nine like, toes, but he's still courageous enough to do it. <laughs> no, uh, but but I do use uh, like a um, uh, like a flat shoe, no sole kind of thing. Um, so so you feel. You feel the soil. Uh, yes, I am a little disconnected from it, but at least I feel like, almost feel like I'm walking on it. Well, I would say this, if I would recommend that people go barefoot as much as possible, except when you're mowing a lawn, um, you know, or, you know, maybe carrying something very, very heavy. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be yeah. about it. I, I think uh, everything in, in moderation uh, yeah. goes a long way. Well, Frank, yeah. thanks for your questions today, brother, and thanks for coming on. Carter, you want to wrap up, bro? Yeah, yeah, so, sounds good. Um, hey, Enrichers, thank you so much for joining us for another episode of the Health and Wealth Podcast Show. To be able to see all of our previous guests and any of the other shows that we have maybe alluded to on this one, uh, go to our website at www.thehealthandwealthpodcastshow.com, and you can be able to make sure, make sure to like, share, and subscribe wherever you get your podcast, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or Google, or wherever you get yours. Um, I want to go ahead and thank my fantastic co-host, Mr. Tim James of Chemical Free Body, for joining me on here again, and for having our amazing and unique, from Denmark, guest today, Frank Beiskov of 44 Financial. Frank, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your story and your journey through the uh, through the financial services uh, area that you are now fully immersed in. And, uh, and thank you for all your great questions about all the health things as well. Well, thank you so much, uh, both of you. It was, uh, I, I had a lot of fun with it. So, uh, I, I hope it, uh, I hope you can hear that. <laughs> Absolutely. No, it, it was a lot of fun until next time. Uh, in Richards, uh, have a great, wonderful and abundant life. And, uh, we will see you again on the health and wealth podcast show. Thank you, everybody. Hey, Enrichers, thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Health and Wealth Podcast. I'm your host, Carter Wilcoxon. And I'm your host, Tim James. And by God, we are committed to helping you guys have fat wallets, flat bellies. So tune in again for another episode and make sure to like, share, and drink a lot of water. Or beer. You have just listened to the Health and Wealth Podcast with Carter and Tim.